Hi, this is Duke 3D Level Design Course, Episode 3, Sector Editing, Part 1. I prepared a new sector and applied textures. You don't have to do this, you can use the sector from the previous video. Position your mouse cursor over the ceiling and use the page up key to raise it, or the page down key to lower it. You can do the same for the floor. If you happen to aim at the walls and use these keys, the ceiling will be adjusted. Use the home plus page up page down or end plus page up page down for more precise height adjustments. To create a slope on the sector's floor or ceiling, start by selecting the sector's first wall. This first wall serves as the axis line for the slope. To do this, hover your mouse cursor over the wall you want to use as the axis. Or you can hover just below the wall for the floor or just above it for the ceiling. Then press Alt plus F. In 2D mode, you simply highlight the wall. Note that a small cross appears on the wall next to the cursor. The flashing wall and this cross indicate the selected wall. Press Alt plus F. Afterward, go to 3D mode and point to the floor or ceiling and use the square brackets to raise or lower it. Experiment by selecting different first walls in both 2D and 3D modes to get a sense of how sloping works, like so. Use Shift plus square brackets to lower and raise the slope more precisely. Another useful tool is the ability to create semicircles. Switch to 2D mode. Highlight any wall you want and press C. Now move the cursor around and you will notice a semicircle following your mouse cursor. You can use the keypad plus or minus keys or the mouse wheel to adjust its vertex resolution. The center of the semicircle is automatically stuck to the grid. You can change the size of the grid for a more accurate center. Now you can either press spacebar to complete the operation or you can press C again to cancel the operation. Now, let's try to make a circle or sector. Create a triangle. Make one of its sides a semicircle. Now connect the vertex to make a semicircle. Apply the semicircle again, changing the grid size to make the center coincide. Alright, let's talk about valid player space. Valid player space can be a bit confusing, but the name is self-descriptive. It just refers to map space that exists, so that a player can travel within it. Draw a square inside of another sector. This is referred to in the engine as the inner loop, because technically this is inner square is not a sector yet. In 2D mode, we can tell that the inner loop is not valid player space because of the white lines and because you cannot enter 3D mode within it. Do not build a sector around another sector, as this will be two separate sectors for the engine. In the future I will talk about the sector over sector technique in more detail. Press Ctrl plus Z to undo. Place the mouse cursor inside the inner loop. Make sure one of the interior walls is highlighted. Now hold Alt and press S. The inner loop will become valid player space, and the message inner loop made into a new sector will be displayed below. In 2D mode, we can see this because of the red lines. In 3D mode, we can see this because the column is gone. Now that you have seen an example of valid player space, I can explain white lines and red lines. White lines are one-sided walls meaning that only one wall exists. The other side is facing invalid player space, therefore no wall exists on that side. A red line is a two-sided wall, meaning that the player can be on either side of that line, and both sides have separate attributes. Enter 3D mode. Now try to change the height of the ceiling or the slope of the sector. As you can see, now we have two separate sectors, and we can set them to different parameters. 
they will make up the geometry of your future level. In order to make this sector a non-valid player space, switch to the 2D mode, move the cursor into the sector and press the Ctrl plus delete key. In the next lesson, we will continue to explore sector editing.